Hello everybody. In this programming exercise, we'll demonstrate the concepts behind the Fisher-Yates Modern Shuffle Algorithm. Now, Using this physical example on the table, we're going to convey the logic behind the algorithm and discuss the concept. Then we're going to write the logic in JavaScript programming to add an array shuffle method to JavaScript's array object. But having this visual aid first will help you in understanding exactly how the algorithm is going to run. According to the Fisher-Yates Modern Shuffle algorithm, we should loop from back to front over this array, bypassing index position 0. So we have 8 items in our array, or 8 elements in our array. That means this array, according to the Fisher-Yates Modern Shuffle logic, is only supposed to run 7 times. So you bypass index position 0 within your loop. So what happens is the first pass of the loop, we're going to affect index position 7. Because as most of you guys know, all arrays start with an index position of 0. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we're starting with index position 7. So what we have to do in the first pass of the loop is generate a random number between 0 and 7. Now let's say that random number happens to be a 3. So we go to index position 0, 1, 2, 3, and we swap this value for value at index position 7. Then what happens in the next pass of the loop is we generate a random number this time that's only between 0 and 6. So let's say that random number happens to turn out to be a 2 or a 1. Then we go to index position 1, 0, 1. And we swap that value for the index position 6. So basically each time you're switching the value found at the index position of the loop for the random value. In the next pass of the loop we're going to be affecting index position 5. So in that pass of the loop we generate a random number that's only between 0 and 5. And let's say that happens to land on 5. That means you don't do anything. That remains a G. But if it happens to land on let's say 0, then you go to index position 0 if your random number happens to be 0, you go to index position 0 and swap that value out for the value at index position 5. So if your random number happens to be the same number that you're on in your index position of the loop, then you don't do anything. Now the next pass of the loop, we go to index position 4. Inside of this pass of the loop, we only generate a random number between 0 and 4. Let's say that happens to be a 3. So we go to 0, 1, 2, 3, and we swap the value at index position 3 for index position 4. Then the next pass of the loop we affect index position 3. And we generate a random number between 0 and 3. And let's say that happens to be a 1. We go to 0, 1. And we take the value at index position 1 and we swap it for index position 3. In the next pass of our loop, we're going to be affecting index position 2 of the array. Then we generate a random number between 0 and 2. Let's say that happens to be a 0. Then we take index position 0 and we swap it for index position 2. And in the final pass of the loop, we're going to affect index position 1. And we generate a random number in between 0 and 1. So let's say it happens to be a 0, then we take the value found at index position 0 and we swap it for the value found at index position 1. And that's how it works. Each time that you do it, it'll be different because different random numbers would be generated each time. And that's the logic behind the Fisher-Yates Modern Shuffle algorithm. Now what we'll do is open up our favorite code editor and we'll program this in JavaScript and I'll show you how it looks in JavaScript. First, establish a new example.html file. And in it, we're going to open up a script element. Make sure we close it. And let's establish our array. And this array is going to have eight elements within it. The first element is an A. That's at index position 0. Index position 1, we're going to have a B. All the way through H. Now, the next thing we do is create some variables that our loop is going to require. The first one is going to be named I. And that's going to be equal to our arrays.length. Then we can put a comma and the next variable we want to establish is j and that's going to represent our random number that we generate through the loop each time the loop passes the next variable is temp and that variable is going to hold the temporary value so we can do some swapping between the two 
indexes in the array that we need to swap. Now the next thing we'll need is a while loop. Open, close parentheses, open curly brace, go down a couple of lines and put in your closing curly brace. Now after this loop runs, we're just going to simply write ourselves the array so we can see exactly what it looks like after it's all shuffled. So in the while loops condition, the expression we want to put in place is while minus minus i is greater than zero. And we're putting that condition because we don't ever want it to get to the zero index in the array. Now what happens when you put minus minus i is it's going to decrement the index, the array's length each time. So when the array starts it's going to have a uh, length of 8 because there's 8 elements in this array. So the first time the loop runs the i is going to equal 7 in the loop's code. The second time it runs it'll equal 6 until it gets to 0 and then it stops. But it won't run the 0 index. Now the first thing we do inside of the loop is we establish the value for the j which is going to be the random number that we generate each time the loop passes. And this code right here is how we get a random number generated between 0 and i each time the loop passes. So the first time the loop passes it'll generate a random number between 0 and 7. Second time the loop passes it'll generate a random number between 0 and 6 and so on. Then the next value we want to set up is the temp. We want to get the uh, the random index positions value so we put array and we target the j index position the random index position we make sure we grab that value in the temp variable then the next line is we take the array at the random index and we swap it for the value at the index position of the loop so the first time the loop passes i is going to be equal to seven so whatever's in the seventh index position within the array is going to get swapped with whatever's in the random index position in the array. So the last line we need to complete that, we target the index position in the loop passing and we put the temp value within that. So basically what these three lines do, it just it does the swapping of the two values into the two index positions they need to go in. So if we take that and we run this in our favorite browser software, you can see we get a shuffled array and each time we refresh, each time that little application runs, it gets a different shuffle. And the Fisher Yates modern shuffle algorithm is supposed to result in an unbiased, efficient shuffle because you're mixing the array, the original array, into itself. Now we want to have something that's a little more reusable and useful, so what we'll do is we'll add this to the array object as a method. So we'll type in array.prototype dot the name of the method that you want we'll name this shuffle is equal to function open close parentheses opening curly brace go down a couple of lines and put in your closing curly brace and what we can do is take this code that we need and put it inside this these variables here and this while loop control x and put it up inside there let's make sure we indent this correctly now inside of it all we have to do is change where we are referencing our array to this. So anywhere you see ARR, you're going to change that to this. And then the last thing to return this, we put return this. So that'll return the shuffled array. And then under the array itself, when we establish the array in our code, we can then refer to that shuffle method on the array. So we can say var result is equal to ARR whatever your array is and then you target the shuffle method run the shuffle method on that array and then you can write the result to yourself to inspect it we run that in our favorite browser software you can see we get the shuffled array shuffled according to the Fisher Yates modern algorithm Okay, so on the page where this video is going to live at developphp.com, I'm probably going to have three different examples. The last example I'm going to give you guys is just like the first example we wrote, but I put a few comments in place at the top, and this is running procedurally. This isn't the adding it as a method, but I just wanted to put this version up for developer reasons. So if you run this in your favorite browser, it shows you every loop pass and exactly what's happening within each loop pass. So for instance, the first loop pass, we're, we're affecting index position 7 of the array. And we generate a random number ranging between 0 and 7. 
The generated number happened to be a 6, so we swap values found at index position 7 and 6. And it goes all that way, all the way down until you get to index position 1 in the array. Now the little messages I wrote up top was the loop should iterate over the array from back to front, bypassing index 0. The loop should run array.length minus 1 times. Now each loop pass generate a random number ranging between 0 and i. And each loop pass, you swap the index i value with the value found at index j, j being the random index. So this version of the code will just help you as a developer really wrap your head around what's happening in the script. Okay, so I hope you guys have found all of this helpful. And remember, the three different examples that we wrote, the three different scripts, will all be available under the video in little different code sections. And I'll put a link to the page where you guys can see all that code under the video. If you're at YouTube watching this video, just check in the description area and I'll have a little link to the page where you can get at all the code. So that's how you can program shuffle methods into your favorite programming language according to the Fisher Yates Modern Shuffle algorithm. And it could be any programming language that you're good at scripting in. For instance, PHP, Java, whatever. But a lot of programming languages already have their own shuffle function ready to go. For instance, PHP, it has a built-in shuffle function. But JavaScript has no shuffle methods for its array objects. So that's something you have to put in place. Okay, talk to you later.